What's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 1985 Oldsmobile Forenza sedan. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four, and down below is a three-speed automatic transmission. Now, I am super excited to be driving this Oldsmobile Forenza for two reasons. First of all, I am collecting J bodies here on the Shooting Cars channel like they're Infinity Stones. I've driven the Forenza wagon, I've driven Cavaliers, I've driven Cimarron, and there's just something charming about them, so I enjoy showing you more and more. But the second reason is the fact that this is one of the best showings of the fact that, yes, the 80s had synth wave and digital things, but there was also a lot of brown going on in the 80s, and so this car reminds you of that every waking moment. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com. Whether you're across the country or here in Denver, Colorado, you could submit your vehicle. But let's get back to that two liter under the hood. Well, that was pretty standard across the board when it came to the J-body vehicles. The Cadillac Cimarron came with an engine like this. The Cavalier came with an engine like this. And of course, the Sunbird came with an engine like this. They're not very punchy. They're not anything to really brag about, but they work decently well. Like I said, Paraduit is a little automatic transmission. However, you can find these in manual. I've actually driven the manual Forenza, which is actually a lot of fun. So the automatic here is a little bit boring, a little lazy here and there. It is an 80s transmission, so you can't really knock it too hard for that. But if you would like to seek out a manual, that is a possibility. Last but not least about the drivetrain, the Forenza is front wheel drive and how does it feel to drive that front wheel drive Forenza it's nice it's nice and simple there's no crazy mechanics or feelings that come from any of the J body vehicles they drive like how you would assume a little car would drive they're decently nimble around town visibility is wonderful because of the thin a pillars and overall I really enjoy these simple little things with that stuff out of the way let's talk about the interior well in front of me I have really only have two gauges but off to the left I have warning lights for battery and oil pressure then I have my speedometer and fuel in the center and off to the right I have warning lights for temperature and seat belts that's it. On the steering wheel, I don't get anything else either. This car is a base model, yet also an Oldsmobile, so it already has one leg up on the competition, but it's still a base, which is odd. Off to the left, we do have our parking lights, headlights, and interior lights, as well as two climate control vents. And on the door, we have the latch to get in and out and crank for the window. This does have manual windows in an Oldsmobile. I also do get this Forenza badge on the door, which I always love seeing in older cars. Moving into the center, we have two more climate vents along with coin holders and a money clip. Very, very interesting to see this here. And it's cool that they labeled it too. You don't have to guess what it does. And these are both kind of bygone eras because no one really carries cash anymore. Down below, we have the original Delco radio that only gets AM stations. Again, something cool to see here in 2024 because a lot of cars are actually phasing out AM altogether. New Volvo products, you cannot reach AM stations. And so to see this almost 40 years ago where you could only get AM is pretty fun to see. To the left of that, that's actually where you'll find your air conditioning options. Down below, we have the rear defog, as well as our cigarette lighter and a cubby. And then moving into the center, we have an ashtray, which the previous owner has added a temperature gauge to, and the automatic shifter, big push button off to the left. Pretty simple to get in and out of gear. Then we have the handbrake and no cup holders. So by default, no J body has ever passed, but by default, it fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> The seats are actually really comfy, although they are cloth. Again, kind of weird to see Oldsmobile was a little bit upmarket, but this is a base model of that. And this is one of my favorite parts, not only the fact that it's all brown, but just how well kept this interior is. Really, really enjoy that. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 1985 Oldsmobile Forenza sedan, and a couple of things to note. First of all, I don't think it's any less roomy than the wagon, which is always great to see. A lot of the times, wagons are more roomy. That's kind of the whole reason for it, and more spacious. It feels pretty similar back here, at least not driving them back to back. I drove the wagon about two years ago, but 
in my head that seems pretty similar. I do have an ashtray down below and the brown definitely carries on throughout. However, I do wanna note that yes, this is an economy car. This is the smallest, most entry level Oldsmobile you could buy and yet the back seat isn't super crammed. My knees aren't even hitting the seat in front of me. Now, it's very obvious that I'm not in the back of a Rolls Royce or a Mercedes Grocer or whatever, but it's not bad. This is when GM didn't necessarily punish you for buying the base model, they just gave you less. Where in modern GM, if you buy the base model, kind of feels like, oh, you wanna buy a base model? You wanna buy a base model? <coughs> Where this, it's like, oh, you got the base. You know, that's what you could afford. You're a working guy or gal. Anyway. Let's hop into the very back and talk about the trunk. All right, so if you're new to this vintage of cars, you might be shocked by this, but if you grew up in this era, you know all about this. So this era of GM cars, or a lot of American cars, had two different keys. So A key, it has a little A on it, it's for the ignition. The B key, or the round key, was for the trunk. And so, turn it like that, and as you can see, decent trunk space out of the little Forenza. It is a small car, but they didn't compromise on cargo room, much like they do here today. So this might mean it might have a little bit less crash protection than a modern vehicle, a lot less, but that's okay. Here's the trunk of an Oldsmobile Forenza sedan for the first time on the Shooting Cars channel. Now we gotta talk about the looks and it's brown. It's brown and brown, brown on brown, 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 brown. And I love that fact. It's also interesting for me to be seeing a sedan, even though the wagon version is more rare, I have a lot more experience with the wagon version. So to see the sort of like cut off back of a sedan is odd to say the least. However, I'm welcoming it here today. And this was the more popular version of the Forenza. Speaking of the exterior, there are two things that I want to talk about on this particular Forenza that aren't on other Forenzas, but I think is really interesting for the era. So first of all, as you'll see through the glass, there is a third brake light. Now this is a 1985 Forenza, meaning it didn't legally need a third brake light. So this was installed after the fact by a previous owner. This was a common thing in the 1980s because third brake lights were proven to be more safe and so you could tell when people were stopping. So people were actually installing them on their own. And as you could see that, it's sort of just hastily pasted onto the rear parcel shelf. The other thing I wanted to talk about was this logo here. So this is a Denver, Colorado thing. And I'll explain more here up at the front. There's another sticker. It says, watch your car. Watch your car is an auto theft prevention program. The owner of this vehicle agrees to the terms and conditions of the program. This vehicle, if seen on public road between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m., can be stopped by law enforcement officials and the driver questioned if he or she is legally authorized to operate this vehicle. It is a federal offense to remove this decal without consent of the owner. Very, very interesting. And it has the Colorado Division of Criminal Justice and the Colorado flag, something I've never seen on a car before. And we're in Colorado, the mountains are past there. There's mountains, I promise. But we are in Denver, Colorado, and so that's a Colorado thing. I don't know how old this is, but if anyone's ever heard of this, please give me some info on the Watch Your Car program, because that's very interesting. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving another Oldsmobile Forenza here on the Shooting Cars channel? Well, it's always a joy to be driving vehicles from this era, and especially GM, J-Bodies. There's just something so homely about them. I didn't grow up in the 80s. I grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s. But driving this car, I just get this nostalgic feel about it. Like I did grow up in one of these, even though I didn't. But like I said at the early part of the video, this is an interesting case study because 1985, in my mind, is sort of the crossover year into like the digital synth wave, wire diagram sort of 80s that we know and love in pop culture the big hair, the leg warmers, that sort of thing. Well, pre-1985, that wasn't really the biggest trend, and so you got a lot of vehicles like this. Brown was very fashionable. Take a look at this Pontiac Phoenix that I drove from the same era. Same thing, brown on brown. That was fashionable. That was in at the time. And so a lot of people dislike J-Bodies. They say that they were kind of cheap cars, they didn't run great, they weren't lovable, and they might have some good points with those arguments, but 
but this car is just so jolly. It has spirit. It has character to it. And so even though this was a darker time for GM, switching over to front wheel drive, post oil crisis, downsizing era, starting to use four cylinders instead of six or eight. A lot of people say, oh yeah, that's a dark time for GM. But don't forget, there was a band playing songs when the Titanic went down. And I have to imagine that even when the ship was sinking and people were running for their lives, someone probably stopped and said, that's kind of a banger. That's a good song. That's how I feel about this car. Yeah, the ship might have been going down, but this is a good one. This is fun. I'm, I'm having fun for this moment. Maybe it's not the best moment ever. Maybe it's not the best car ever. But you know what? It's here today. And that's all I can ask for from a 40-year-old GM. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Damien as well as Jacob for facilitating this video. This is Damien's car. They picked it up last night. They haven't even driven it all that much, and I'm reviewing it here today, so I appreciate that very, very much, as well as Jacob for setting up the time and destination for the video. We're filming a couple cars today, and that is thank you to him. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.